All right, you guys ready to get started? Chat about this stuff? If I was to do a quick poll of the audience, who here knows like the JSON schemas of image manifest and that kind of stuff, getting down to that low level details? I know, I know a few of you do. Okay, we, we got about 50-50. I think everybody rose their hand, I probably know. So that's probably the part of the challenge here. So welcome, this is gonna be modifying the immutable. And so we're gonna talk about how you can attach artifacts to OCI images. By that we're talking about, everybody's been saying stuff like generating SBOMs. And we're talking about how we create the SBOMs. Other people are saying how to consume the SBOMs. This is saying how you can connect those to your image and start shipping them out to people who need to deploy them later on. And so let's chat. The background of me, I'm not gonna go through the full details. I do work for Boxboat. Got other people here. I'm sure someone's hiring, all that good stuff. But the important details from this one are that I'm an OCI maintainer. And a lot of this work comes out of the OCI. We've got a working group that we're going through a lot of the efforts on this stuff. And on some of the slides in the demos, you're gonna see you use a little tool called RegCuddle. It comes out of a Reg client project, and I'm the maintainer of that one. So when you see that, that's me just picking a tool because it's what I know. All right, so for the background, for those that didn't raise your hand on the underlying stuff, you probably already know that container images have like file system layers. They've got their own config. You've probably done like a Docker build at some point and then probably changed to other build tooling and trying different stuff out. You've probably seen it. There's a SHA-256 checksum for like pinning an image to a specific digest and so someone can't change it in that way and you might have a rough idea what's going on but not quite. And I'm sure at some point you've come across multi-platform images where you, someone's saying we need to start building for all these Mac M1s out there because everything else has been built for all the Intel machines. And so under the covers, there's a lot going on in OCI, so I want to hit a little bit of that and make sure you understand what's happening under the covers because that's going to apply for when we actually start talking about how we start to attach things together. So under the covers, the important detail here is that everything that's happening in OCI when you push it to a registry is a content addressable store. And so what that means on the first line is I'll take a digest and if I curl that digest the name of that digest from the registry and pull down that blob, pipe that through a SHA-256 checksum, it's gonna output that same value. And so it's the digest of the content itself is the name of the content, and that's how you do the content addressability. Fancy name there. In this case, I'm looking at a layer, and so you see a whole bunch of the files in the layer, so it's just a compressed tar file, and so that's like half the image, right? The other half of the image is gonna be your JSON config. What user am I running it as? What are the commands that I'm kicking off when I start this container up? If there's a history in there, you can see all the previous historical steps, environment variables, all that stuff. That all gets passed as a JSON blob. Same idea, content addressable store. You just serialize it into a byte array, do the digest on that, and now you have another address for that blob as well. And these are each stored as blobs. Registry doesn't care which they're on a blob. So JSON, tar, binary, text, whatever. It takes whatever you want to throw in there as long as it just maps to the digest of the string you gave it. So now you have these two pieces, we need to put them together because an image, not necessarily one layer, might have multiple layers and it's got a config. And so to assemble them together, what we have is an image manifest. Yeah, another piece of JSON here that we're looking at. So I know this probably gets a little bit tedious, but bear with me for a second. Where we've got the config descriptor and that the descriptor has the digest that we're talking to. We've got the layers in there that we're referencing. And so in this case, I've got a single layer that we're talking to. And you put those two things together, you put them in the JSON, you serialize the JSON, you calculate the digest on that JSON. Now you have the digest of your image manifest. This is the pin digest. Whenever you say, I want to pull an image by its digest, this is what you're pulling. If you ever change one of the layers, you change the content of the layer, you change the layer digest, and that changes this digest as well because it's all included in there. So that's how you make that structure. Graphically, it looks a lot like this. Where we've got a tag. The tag, think of it as like a symbolic link. You can have multiple tags pointing to the same thing. You can have a tag that used to point to one digest and the future points to a different digest. And then that points to your manifest. That manifest is immutable because it's referenced by the digest. All this content is referenced under there. So pretty pictures, I feel like that wakes some people up sometimes. I know I'm holding you right before the coffee break and so it's gonna be a little struggle here. Immutability is the nice feature we get out of all this. So when you do this, you've got a Merkle tree, you've got a DAG, a directed acyclic graph out there, and you've got the, uh, the content addressable store we already talked about. You put all those things together and you get this immutability. So in case, uh, in case I'm going too far back into the college days, the Merkle tree is when you have a data structure that has a hash itself and its content, all its child nodes are hashed and so when you ever change it. And so that was that structure we were just looking at there. Okay, 
So far, hopefully nods in the room. We probably got a little bit too deep in the weeds for some people, but that's kind of where this talk is going. Another piece here that's important are the multi-platform images. And so to do this, we have a different kind of manifest. That different kind of manifest just has multiple descriptors for each one of the different platform specific manifests. And so it's a manifest of manifest. So you have this hierarchical pointing. And when you do this, when you're looking through that array of descriptors there and you say, okay, which one do I want to pull? You have to put something in there that can identify one versus the other. And the way we're identifying it for the multi-platform manifest, we put the platform in there. And so you put that extra field in there. You say, this is the platform for ARM. The other one is the platform for AMD. And then you're going through looking for your manifest. You can pick it from the list. And the runtime just does this for you transparently under the covers. But importantly, this has its own digest as well. So you can serialize this one. You'd send that digest in there. And when you send this to your runtime, the runtime knows how to figure out its own platform under the covers. All right, graphically, we're now up to this. We've got our tag that's pointing to the multi-platform manifest. That in OCI land is called an index. And so you have an index, just the terminology it's had to pick. That points to multiple manifests for each one of your platforms. That points to each of the configs and all the layers out there. So we built this nice big graph. And I need to put one last piece on this puzzle, and then we can actually get into the fun part of the talk. And the last piece is that for the longest while, we've been able to push artifacts to a registry. Anybody ever hear about pushing a Helm chart to a registry or something like that? If you ever want to push a Helm chart to a registry, you just push a blob. And their blob, I think they actually happen to push a tar file out there, a compressed tar file, but it could have been anything they wanted to. You push that blob, and the thing they change is the media type that is on that config descriptor. They change that media type on that one piece, and that tells anybody running it that this is no longer a container image we're trying to run with a container image runtime, but this is some other tool that should be looking at it, working it, even though both of these are image manifest. We just kind of overloaded that one tool out there just so that we get that portability. So we overloaded that, but otherwise, in this example here, I made a little electron bill of materials, and I just said that this does contain electrons. Ship that, and I can attach that to any image I wanted to if I decided to. Okay. So that's all the fundamentals. This is stuff that already exists out there. People are doing this today. There are Helm charts out there. There are container images. There are multi-platform images. This is kind of the underlying bones of what's going on under the covers. The challenge OCI faced was we're saying, OK, great. We've got all these SBOMs out there. We've got all these other tools. How can we associate one to the other? And if anybody was in here for Rose's uh, bit, her conversation earlier, the discussion went, hey, we're shipping the container images out there. We really want to ship the SBOM alongside of them and somehow associate the two together. Because it's not the best if you say we're going to have this central repository of all the SBOMs that some government agency manages for us. I know I come out of the DC area, trust us, we work for the government, might be a famous term out there, but I'm sure a lot of people in here are like, no, 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 we're not going to trust them. So trying to get a centralized entity isn't going to necessarily work. Trying to have every person go out to a different place to try to figure out where this SBOM isn't going to work. You don't want to like figure out, okay, it's under the released uh, folder over on GitHub for this one project. Someone else put it out on their website. No, we, we want to ship these things together. We already have a way to ship an image. We can already ship other artifacts within the container registry. We just need to associate the two together. So the challenge we faced was how do we modify this immutable thing? Because our container image is immutable. It can't change. But we want to be able to say, for this container image, what's the SBOM? What's the signature? What's all this other data out there? And we had a few requirements. So the working group was spun up and said, here, here are your go-to requirements. And some of those things we were looking at was efficiency. We want to make sure we weren't making a whole lot of API calls. Other challenges we were looking at were how do we both attach and detach content? If you start shipping out an image, you might say the upstream had it signed with their signature, but when we brought this in-house and we brought it to our own registry, we wanted to sign it with our own ID. We don't care about that upstream signature, so we just don't even want to pull that in-house. Or maybe they had more metadata than you even wanted to include, or you need to add extra metadata that wasn't there. So a lot of different challenges along those lines. We also we couldn't predict what everybody was going to include you could start including cat pictures with all your container images you wanted to, and we didn't want to try to write the spec for how to attach cat images to, image, to container images. Gets a little complicated. So the nice thing about this problem is that we weren't faced with the impossible. We actually had multiple solutions out there, and some of them were already being used. And so our challenge wasn't how to create this, it was how to pick. Um, and so the first option we were looking at was the Oris team was out there, and they said, we're going to make a new artifact manifest. We're going to push that out to the registry. We're going to have a new definition that's not going to have this config blob because we don't need that, but we just have our own little blobs of whatever needs to go in the artifact. We're going to have the subject field we're going to put in there, and that subject field is just another descriptor, has its digest, and that's going to point back to the image we're extending. But now from our manifest on the left-hand side of the screen, there's no way you can go from that arrow back to the right, so now we need to add a new API. 
And so we add the new API, it's the refers API, that when you query that with our manifest digest on, from the left-hand side, it'll spit back the list of descriptors for all the manifest on the right-hand side of this picture. And so that's how he made that mapping. We were gonna have to add something to the registry. A couple of pros and cons to this one. I mean, it was nice and efficient. You had the API and the registry is gonna do it all for you. But none of this is gonna work on an existing registry today. Any registry out there that doesn't know what that artifact manifest, that blue box on the right looks like, is gonna reject it. Because while they accept any blob at all, all those green boxes, they'll take whatever you throw at them. They don't care about that part. When you're a manifest, the registry is parsing it because it's doing stuff like garbage collection. It's doing all that association cleanup. It's doing some validation in there. So if you push something in there it doesn't recognize, it just rejects it. And so that was one of the big challenges we looked at for this. So we said, well, it's easy enough to change this a little bit. OCI has the model where we say you can extend any manifest out there. You can take a manifest that has five fields and you can add a six field into it that's got some extra structure in it. And as long as you parse it and you see the fields you recognize, you can work with it. And someone else that see, knows how to process the more fields, they can do their thing. And so we could add the subject field to an existing manifest. And so now we have another way to make this back reference. So now we can push this thing that's got this back reference in it using an existing media type, just extend it a little bit to a registry. That means it's now portable. We can push this exact same manifest to a new registry or an old registry and it moves from one side to the other and back and it's all, nobody cares, everybody just, it passes from one to the other. We still have the challenge that we can't find this though without having this new API. And this new API would be a new feature you have to add to the registry. So we're, we're halfway there, we're not quite there, but we're getting there. And so the last thing we were looking at that I'll go over is that we were saying we could add a custom tag. And this comes from the Sake Store group. Anybody seen Cosign? I think there might be a few people that might be signing some images. It might have been up on stage earlier, people talking about stuff that needed to be signed. So they came out and said, we're just gonna have a special tag that is the digest of that manifest on the left. Again, we like that digest. It's a nice immutable thing we can always reference. So we just make the tag with the value of the digest. You had to change a little bit of the syntax a little bit, so you change a colon to a dash so that it gets parsed as a tag instead of as a reference or as a, as a digest itself. But you change that one little bit there, now you can reference it as a tag, and now anybody can use that to look up some abstract thing, whatever that tag points to. And the thing we would point to would be maybe the manifest in this case that we wanted to use. Maybe it's pointing to a list of manifests, something like that, but you could just make that pointer in there. So we had a couple options. Different, you know, A, B, and C, and the, the question you might be saying is, okay, well, he threw a whole bunch of options to ask, which one did he pick? And the answer to that is yes. And for, we, we do have some people laughing out there, and the, the reason is yes, because we, we picked them all. We, we couldn't choose. We're, we're bad at making choices. Um, we're, we're bad at a lot of things, but making choices is definitely one that we're, we're not experts at. So at least as part of the release candidates, and this is still up for debate on the first bullet point, is that we did add the artifact manifest. And so I'll put a big asterisk there. We're, we're back and forth right now. It's, it's probably gonna get there eventually, but if you're writing something new right now, there, there's some disclaimers that I'll go through later on. We add the subject field, and not only the subject field to the new artifact manifest, but we add it to the image manifest. And so you can extend things like we said, so that went in there. We add the new refers API. So there is our API is gonna go on a registry server, but this is only gonna be on new registries that implement the new feature that we're talking about. So for all the registries that don't implement this, if you're a client and you're pushing this stuff up there, the client is now responsible for maintaining that tag anytime they're talking to a registry that doesn't have the new feature. So with this, we now have the full backward forward compatibility. We've got a nice solution and graphically it gets a little busy, a little bit busy and I actually had to take some of the arrows off here to make it flow a little better. So those subject lines there will go all the way back to the manifest on the left. But what we have is you pull your manifest from the version three you go down and you say, here's my digest for the manifest that B3 points to. Let me go out and see if there's anything that refers to it. And so you go hit the refers API, and if that exists, great, it's gonna come back out with this index. Nice thing about that index is that data, data type structure, that already exists right now in all the specs. So we didn't have to invent anything new. And that index, as we were talking about just a bit ago, is a manifest to manifest, so you can just point to as many of these as we want to, which means we can have a whole lot of artifacts we're all referencing at this point, which is great. And oh, by the way, if it doesn't work and we have to fall back, we use this tag and the tag can point to the exact same data structure. So the clients don't care how they get the data structure, they're getting the exact same data back from the registry, whether they're talking the new stuff or the old stuff. And the reason we want the new stuff is having the registry manage this for us is great, but in case it doesn't, the client can manage it and we at least have something that's functional. All right, before I go too much farther, I get a lot of questions on this next topic, which is, hey, you talked about adding the subject field to the artifact manifest that you just added. You talked about having the subject to 
the image manifests. They'll refer to a single image. But hey, the, what about the multi-platform images, right? And people, people keep asking that question. Can we have that subject field over there so the multi-platform image can point to things? And the way I'm going to start that is to say the picture on the left exists. Where if you're saying I've got an artifact and I want to extend a multi-platform image with some metadata, you want to sign a multi-platform image, you want to add an SBOM at that level, you can do that. You can sign at the top level or you can sign each individual manifest. You probably want to do both, but you can do that. It's the picture on the right that we don't allow. And the picture on the right that we don't allow, the reason we don't want to have an index that points back to something else is because at that point, you know from the index that you're creating both the subject field and potentially all the child fields, which means you can predict both of those descriptors, or not predict, you know exactly what both those descriptor values are. And the way you walk this, even though those things both point to the left, the way you walk this is in a circle. And we were talking about earlier, we made this, uh, this DAG structure, the directed acyclic graph. I didn't really go into the whole what that means, but a directed acyclic graph means it is acyclic. There are no cycles. You don't want loops. Loops are bad in the OCI land. So what's happening here is you have this V3 tag. You've queried the V3 tag. You pull the image manifest there. And you say, tell me everything that refers to this image manifest. So logically, you walk over to that index on the right. Then you say, tell me all my child nodes from this index. You go walking back to the node on the left, repeat in infinite. And that's no good. The other nice thing we tried to focus on here with all the changes we were making was to say, hey, registries need to do some garbage collection. Even though we don't specify it in the spec, they still want it. And so the logic we put out there was to say that as long as you have the manifest exists that you're pointing to, keep the artifact that's out there. So even though the artifact itself isn't tagged, the manifest it points to still exists. So we can say, don't garbage collect it. We're still in use. Keep this artifact around. And so that makes it a lot more efficient. So when you have a registry out there and you've got all this stuff sitting up in your repository, you don't have to tag every one of these individual artifacts to keep them from being cleaned up later on. It's nice to just know as long as the image is there, all the metadata is there with it. So we made all these definitions, a bunch of pictures. If there are people back there who like to see the code as well, here's the low-level JSON. And this is the JSON used in the fallback. So I actually go through and show you if I pull an image, I get the digest of that image, I define that tag with that digest in there, and I go query this manifest API for that tag, what I get back is an index. And in that index, the important thing here is to note that we've got a descriptor that says, here are the different entries in my manifest, and I've got some metadata I pulled up. So the metadata I pulled up is going to say, here's the artifact type and the annotations. And the reason we want to pull up the artifact type and the annotations is that when we get a list of all these manifests that extend our image, you're going to have a signature. You're going to have an SBOM from Cyclone DX. You're going to have an SBOM from SPDX. You're going to have uh, attestation of the build process that went through. You're going to have a whole bunch of these manifests. You don't want to pull each one of them and figure out what it is. And so we pull that metadata up. And so this is the refers API is going to do this for you on the server. Or if you're a client, you're managing this, you're going to do it yourself. And the place you pull it up from is from the manifest of our actual artifact itself. And so the artifact itself, we mentioned earlier, you change that media type on the config, and that's how you know what this artifact is. So we change that config a little bit. You can put annotations over there. You can put all kinds of other metadata. And as long as that subject is there, that creates that association between the two. So I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, this is you know, fantastic. You showed me all this low-level detail that I probably don't even care about. I'll give you good news. There is code that just does this for you all out of the box, and so you don't have to write any of this yourself. Right? OK, that's the good news. I will at least show it off. And I did tell you that um, some of us going to have some of my code in here. There are other options. I'll show you some of the options as well. But let me spin up two registries. I'm going to define a few variables here that are going to be used to reference these two registries. And one's going to be listed on port 5001. The other's going to be listed on port 5002. And I'm only going to use some OCI media types for my stuff. And so I went through a little bit of effort to make sure that I didn't have to keep track of Docker media types, OCI media types, and other kinds of things. I just kept it simple. So I made two different media types there. The first registry I'm spinning up is going to be the CNCF distribution registry listing on port 5001. That registry has not been updated, so that is going to be an OCI v1.0 registry that doesn't have any of the new features yet. So this is as is today. If you went talking to a registry out in the cloud today, this is probably what you would be talking to, something like this, that doesn't have the new APIs, doesn't have the new artifact. And so anytime I push something up to here, I got to do it the old way. The second registry I'm going to spin up is called Zot, so I'll come up in another line here. The Zot registry has been updated. They, they jumped early on this release candidate and wanted to show off that they can do some new latest and greatest features. So I'll show how that one works. 
And like I say, their registry supports the new artifact manifest. Their registry supports the new repurs API. And that, it's that latter one that we really care about. And so that API is going to be interesting. You also see me turn off TLS. Turning off TLS is fantastic for demos, not great for production, but just makes my life so much easier. So I did that. And lastly, I needed to put an image out there. So I went and grabbed an image out from Docker Hub, and I'm just kind of doing a little bit of self-doggy fooding. I just kind of grabbed my own image because I knew that I had on the OCI media type, so I just wanted to keep it simple. And I wanted to keep a single platform, so I actually went through and found the descriptor for just a single platform out so I didn't want to go through like a multi-platform index and get too complicated. I like things to say, you know, as complicated as all this text is, I wanted to keep it at least somewhat simple. All right. So I'm going to copy this manifest over from the internet back over to my local registry, and then you can see the manifest is up there in my local registry now. And this is, like I say, single platform manifest, OCI, image, B1, all that good stuff. All right, that's just the setup. So we haven't done anything fancy yet. That's just the initial setup. And this is the part that everybody's going to like, is that the part you have to worry about if you're attaching stuff is a very short slide here. I'm going to run a SIF command to generate an SBOM. So I want to have an example here. And Pick your tool. I just happened to pick this one because it was very easy, simple one-liner. I'm generating a Cyclone DX SBOM. And this is, again, where I'm getting into my regcuddle command where I say I want to do an artifact put. And so I'm going to push an artifact up to the registry. I'm setting the subject line. And I'm also going to start setting some annotations, some media types, other things to say this is what this artifact is. Because otherwise it doesn't know. It just kind of puts it up there a little abstractly. And that's not any good. So I push it up there with all those. And I'm going to do a second one as well so that we can see what two of them look like together. And so the second example I'm going to push up there is going to be SPDX, because I don't want to pick favorites. If you ever pick favorites in a room of security people with an SBOM, it's chaos. So I don't like chaos. I like things nice and simple and peaceful. So now we have two artifacts that are getting pushed up here. And for anybody that's generating stuff that needs to start shipping your images, this is it. You're done. That was all you had to do. And your, your job is out you know, finished and complete. And the nice thing is once you have done this, from the end user side, when they start pulling this stuff, they don't have to know where to look. All they have to know is they can list the artifacts on an image, and this will go out and hit that refers API. If the refers API isn't there, it's going to look at that fallback tag. And there is we have two manifests on that list. So let me scroll back there a little bit. You can see that it is an OCI image manifest. Or sorry, there is a descriptor in there with that. This is an index of multiple images. First one being the Cyclone DX, and the second one down below is going to be the SPDX. And you can see the annotations. You can see the artifact type. All that detail, we need to be able to query this stuff later on, programmatically query this stuff later on. So again, this was a, a tag because it was on the fallback registry. So this tag does exist. It looks a little ugly. So this is why people don't like it. They don't want to see all these tags out there. The one nice thing is we only have one tag. So there's not like a SIG tag, an annotation tag, you know, all these other things. We just have the one tag for everything. And then if I go and query that tag with a manifest git, you're going to see it. This is going to look very familiar. It's going to, unless you had really short-term memory loss here, it's going to look identical to that, you know, three lines up. And in case that was, like, too fast to go by, I'll even scroll up there and show you. Uh, there it was here with the manifest list. Scroll up a little bit. There was a previous one. They're the same because that was exactly how we queried it. All right? So whether it's artifact list or the fallback tag, we're getting the same thing with the manifest git as well. So from that, the big challenge is that's great. I want to actually fetch my Cyclone DX SBOM, SPX, something like that. So I've got the artifact get command here, where I say, get me an artifact that has this subject field that points to this image. So I pass the subject, and I pass that, and I say, filter and only show me the thing with this one media type for the artifact. And so now, as long as I keep these media types predictable, I can do this, and there's my SBOM right just that easy. So for the end user, all I have to do is memorize that last command. They don't have to know everything in between. They just had no last command of when I see an image, run this command, I get the SBOM, and I'm done. So that's the nice part. That's the easy part. If you ever want to do this with curl, I won't go through this entire slide, but I will tell you that all this stuff, if you don't turn on authentication on your registry server, a lot of this stuff gets easier. If you know all your media types in advance, this stuff gets a lot easier. Um, when you don't know all that and you try to implement that with curl, it gets a little ugly. So that's where the tools come in nice, and so that's where people start writing tools on top of this. But you can actually run these low-level queries get the manifest, pull the digest out of one of the entries, and go through all that. If you're curious, I'll leave that for later on. All these slides are up online. You can go replay all these presentations later on. But I don't want to bore you too much with the curl details here. I do want to show you, though, that we had two registries, right? And I only showed you what was going on in one registry. Let me copy this artifact from a v1 registry to the new registry with the new release candidate stuff that has the repurs API. And if I do that, 
copy those quick because it's all local on the same machine. I run the list command, and you'll see I get the artifact list back. So I'm able to query this listing of all the artifacts associated with my image. I copied everything over in one unit. If I do the tag listing, I don't have that digest tag anymore. I just have my one app tag. And if I even try to go back and query that tag and try to pull it, I'm going to get, let's see, do I go up on that one? So yeah, I'm going to hit the manifest API, and I'm going to hit that API for this one digest with that little fallback digest we had. That's going to come up and say not found. 404 it didn't even exist, so manifest unknown right there on that line. So without that, you might be saying, okay, how that happened? Well, you saw the big pretty picture earlier on. I just had to hit this new API called refers. I hit that, query that API, and suddenly what I'm getting out of this was that manifest list. So now it's the same way you get the data, two different registries, two different methods to get the data, but the same data out of both of them. So that's the beauty of this. All right, one last bit of detail here for anybody in an air-gapped environment. Do I have anybody in like DOD air-gapped environment kind of stuff that has to worry about that? One, two, three, four, okay, handful. If you're doing that, the OCI layout is a great method to move images around on a file system whenever you're copying them. So you can just copy an image from a registry into the structure. It puts it into a directory on the disk. You can zip it up, ship it around, and I can do the artifact list in there. Now, it's just a directory, so I do have the tag in there. I don't have a registry server generating that API response. But in that directory, there is an index that basically represents all the tags inside the directory. This is the equivalent of having a repository on a registry on your file system. And then you can just copy the stuff all around. So if you're curious about that, another good side to come back to later on if you want to look into that and see a little bit more details there. All right, I'm going to keep jumping ahead because I want to save a little bit of time in case people have questions or want to heckle me later on. But there are other tools to do this. Because I think a lot of people say, you know, great, you showed me all the regcuddle commands. There is another tool out there called ORUS. So if I said ORUS discover on this thing, you're going to see all those manifests listed in there or all the different uh, artifacts that are associated with my image. And same for both registries. Whether I hit it on the new API or the old API, it's able to find it. So that's working great. And also, you're saying I did all this on my laptop. Well, if I go hit the GitHub container registry in a production environment right now on an image that I pushed, they're all up there right now. And so I'm doing this as part of my GitHub pipelines today, right now on an image that's out there in, in the real world. And again, I could also go through, um, so let me show you real quick on what that artifact is. It's, um, I've got three different things attached to it. I picked out Docker Star generating some of their attestations on things. So I got that attached to this. I've got, the, again, the two SBOMs as well. So a couple of those. So as many SBOMs or as many artifacts, whatever you want to attach, attach everything you want to. And also, not just regcuddle, I could have also done the ORUS discover command, again, on GitHub container registry. And it's going to say, hey, you've got all these different artifacts associated with this image. Cool. So we've got a way to do this. We've got commands to do this. We've got tools out here. Um, what should we do? What's the next steps? Where, where are we going to go? So for registry servers, this is all, a lot of this stuff is still new. We're still creating this stuff. So if you are a registry and you don't filter on unknown fields, what do I mean by that? There's this new subject field we just added. So some registries are a little picky about what data comes in. OCI says you're not supposed to be, but there, there are a few people that are doing that. So we're, we're working with them. And we're getting really close, I think, unless they've already done it. Um, they, they may have. And there's also um, the new the config media types that changed. There were some registries that were saying, if it's a config media type that's not a container image, I don't want to allow it. Docker Hub just recently turned that off, and that was awesome for people who wanted to do like Helm charts pushed up there, that kind of stuff. We're finally able to use Docker Hub for this stuff. Additionally, um, the new artifact manifest, we'd like to see support for that, but that comes with a big asterisk. I'll get on that in just one second here. And the enable the refers API. So that's the thing that I think we're really pushing for right now, is to get registries to start adopting this. Like I say, release can't. This is just coming out the door from OCI. We've been having meetings and trying to get this stuff. Uh, getting to a GA release, we're still a little ways off from that, but hopefully in the not too distant future. So anybody that's running a registry, we're saying let's, let's get this stuff out there and standardized. I think the more important part is for the people running clients, right? I think we've probably got more client people in here than registry people. So if you're a client and you want portability to go from one registry to another, use that image manifest. We did say early on in the slide, there's this new artifact manifest we created. I keep throwing asterisks on there. Part of the asterisk is that we're not really quite sure how and when we're going to transition to that. And so we're, we're still working through those details right now. And the, the other part of that is that any registry that hasn't been upgraded couldn't accept this manifest. And so for portability, use the old image manifest for a long while. 
to users, this is all transparent. You don't know when you're pulling a Helm chart that this came with an image manifest. You just know you got a Helm chart. So who cares what manifest it is for a good long while? At some point, it'll be nice to have things that are artifacts look at like artifacts. Some things that are image look like images, but we're not there yet. It's going to take us a while to get everything upgraded. The other important thing, that fallback tag, if you're writing a client of your own, you have to do that management. If you're using someone who's written the client, they're going to do this all for you. And, you, know, you just use their APIs and their tooling. They'll, they'll implement this for you. But when you have this stuff that's being implemented on the client side and not the registry doing the refers API, what they're doing is they're going to have to go up to that registry and manage that tag, which means if the tag's already there, someone's already pushed an artifact, you have to pull down the existing list of all the artifacts, add your new entry to that list, and then re-push the new list. If anybody's ever thought about systems where you're doing like a whole lot of things going on simultaneously, you might be thinking race conditions, and that is one of the downsides of this, is that you can have multiple clients out there pushing this stuff and clobbering each other in the process. That's one of the beauties of getting this done server side versus the client side. The, the other important part here is the artifact type. When you pick that, if you looked at the artifact types, I was picking with the example, with the exclusion of my example early on, I was picking some media types that were well known. They came from IANA, they're registered up there. So if you go and look at Cyclone DX and IANA, they've got their list of here are all the media types have been registered with us. I pick those for all the media types I use. That way, anybody else that's using the same queries can find this same Cyclone DX SBOM no matter what image it is. As long as every image uses the same media type, it's easy to find from one image to the next image to the next image. So you ask people to use some very predictable media types, and hopefully that comes from the project itself saying, this is our media type that we've standardized everything on. Additionally, we ask that you use annotations very responsibly. And this is one of the challenges. We're pulling those annotations up from the manifest up into our listing, and there are people who like to put a lot of stuff in an annotation. Um, I'm sure people who have been on the Kubernetes side has probably seen a lot of abuse of annotations before on, on your side as well. In Container Image Manifest, they're not overused too much yet, but I think they're going to get there before too long. And what we're seeing from registry operators is saying, if we've got to index all this detail so we can generate this API response, we're just going to start rejecting manifests if they start cramming too much data in there. So if you want that portability, be responsible. Only put the data in those annotations that you need to be able to do these queries on yourself. Don't put the whole world in there. Be, be nice to the registry servers. They'll be nice to you. All right. So the catch is, um, the big catch here is we're not done. We're, we're still implementing this stuff. And so as it's still being implemented, the registries, the clients, all this stuff is at various stages. There's still some debate on if and how we're going to do that artifact manifest type. We spent three hours of glorious, fun meeting time yesterday. Uh, back and forth, and we're still not quite to a final solution. We'll get there. We're, we're going to work it out. But uh, it's just going to take us a while to sort out how we want to figure that out. Um, but for anybody that wants to do this today, like I say, I'm doing this right now on my own images. I, I trust it enough that I'm putting it out there. So you can try it out. You can at least do some experiments, see how the code works for you. And this is the nice way that I think we're going to see for going forward into the future of how we want to have these things ported, passed around, all these SBOM, signatures, other metadata, passing around their image in a way that we can now associate the two together and ship them together and transform. So I hope we're going to get to that point. And so with that, I know that was a little bit of a speed run. I know there's a lot of level of code, but hopefully that answered at least some questions that the future is here for what we're doing. And it's been a long walk on the OCI to get to this point. It's been a long, painful walk for some people in the back of the room. Um, but we're getting there to the point where we're actually ready for, I think, end users to start using this. So I don't, I hope that uh, some people get a little bit of inspiration from that. So with that, I'll throw it out there for any questions. Go ahead. Do you see the use case um, as more about distribution or discoverability or both? Do I see it as distribution, discoverability, or both? And I would say, yeah, both. because. Not only can you ship your SBOM and move them around from one place to the other and keep them associated with the image itself, but you can query that image with a listing and say, show me everything that's associated with that image. And you may not know in advance what all these different artifact types are that are going to be associated with the image. There can be new stuff that appears the next day that wasn't there before, and so it gives you that discoverability. Yes? Have you already had the recursion? Have I had the recursion discussion? Dig into a little bit more where you're going with that. Uh, refers, referring to other refers. You can do that, absolutely. And because this is a directed acyclic graph, there is always an end. There is always a bottom to that path. And so you can go down as far as you want to go. You can have a signed SBOM that's not signed with SBOM type, but just an external signature type if you wanted to. 
and that would be an external artifact associated with the SBOM that's then associated with your image. You can absolutely do that. Any other questions? Okay, all you gotta do now is just turn it on. You ready? Uh, Toddy, go ahead. When can we spec start the spec for which part? The cats. For the cats. Um, I keep putting cats in all my presentations, so I, I think, yeah, we're, we're right there. We're ready to do it. Let's, let's knock that out next week. All right. It's got to have those in. I need to include those in every one of my images from this point forward. All right. I saw the stop sign. I think my time is all up. If you've got any other questions for me, I think we're just at a coffee break now, so I don't want to hold you from coffee or tea or anything like that, but feel free to ping me and we'll chat later on. Thanks.